<clears throat> we're in page 1121. We're gonna fly through an introduction to pages nine through 20. Uh, this first piece is pretty easy. A lot of it is review. If you've had algebra one, maybe even algebra two, or maybe you're working through algebra two right now, a lot of these concepts are gonna be review. But I just wanna remind you about a few rules that we do have to follow. And um, some of these things that we learned in math class, the whole purpose is to use them in science. In fact, I'd like to tell my students that when we're in junior high, elementary junior high, we think of math and science as being two totally different subjects. But then the higher we go in math and science, the more those two subjects come together. And by the time you get to physics, and especially physics in college, you're using calculus and advanced math concepts to solve almost all the science problems. So math and science really are the same thing in upper level. But right now we're covering concepts in science and we're covering procedures in math and laying a foundation in both. <clears throat> Chemistry will start seeing them overlap and then physics, wow, they really overlap, okay? Let's talk about um, using a formula <clears throat> And if it's been a while since you did Algebra 1, maybe you did Geometry last year, and Algebra 1's a little bit fuzzy still, let's talk about the fact that we always do is in parentheses first, okay? If we have a problem like this, here's a formula, we take the um, 9 fifths times the Tc, which is the Celsius temperature, solve that first, and then add 32 to the answer. We always do the multiplication, before we do addition. Do you remember, um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? So we do parentheses first, and then exponents if we have any. Multiplying and dividing, so we do the multiplying here before we do the addition and subtraction. All right, subscripted variables are used a lot in algebra two and a lot in chemistry, physics. So TF means the temperature in Fahrenheit, temperature in Celsius. That's all that means, okay? So it's just one quantity represents one number. So let's see if we can do this one in our head. Woo! You are allowed to use a calculator, okay, to do these types of problems. Now, you may have a calculator or you may say, I think I can do this using Google. I can just say, Google, what is the Celsius temperature if for Fahrenheit 68, all right? <clears throat> or if you have Alexa, you can say, Alexa, what is the Celsius temperature if for Fahrenheit 68? Maybe I just activated your Alexa and it's getting ready to tell you, but we're gonna solve the problem, okay? Because we need to know the procedure. That's the important thing. So if I know that the temperature is 68 Fahrenheit, that would be, a, that's a great, isn't it? I love 68 Fahrenheit. That's like my favorite temperature to be outdoors in the spring, the fall. Right here in Pennsylvania right now, it's, um, well, today's a very rainy day. So it's like 73 today. It's normally been in the high 90s for the past week. But here we go, 68 Fahrenheit. We'll plug that in. 68 minus 32 would be 36, right? So now we can take 5 ninths times 36, so I can cancel, and so that would be five times four is 20 degrees Celsius. And some of you watching this video, you may actually live in countries, in fact, most of the world uses Celsius. The United States is one of the few countries that uses Fahrenheit. A lot of the measurements that we use in chemistry, we are gonna use the metric system, okay? <coughs> Now, what if I have a temperature of 35 Celsius and I want to convert that to Fahrenheit? So we'll take the Celsius first, so 35 times 9 fifths, cancel. And so 9 times 7 is 63. And then I'll add that to the 32. So 63 plus 32 is 95. Woohoo! <clears throat> yeah, that's about how warm it's been here in Pennsylvania this past week. So if you live in a lot of the other countries, you would be comparing, you know, 20 degrees feels good and 35 feels hot. And those types of numbers sound more familiar to you than these big numbers, all right? Anyways, the point is we need to know how to use these formulas. You do have to solve some problems on the test doing that kind of a thing. 
All right, let's talk about one more concept that uh, you're going to cover in this section, and that is doing conversions, unit conversions. Let me erase this. There are some <clears throat> facts that we need to have memorized. We need to know that 2.54 centimeters is the same as an inch. Obviously, we should know that one foot is 12 inches. And then we need to be able to convert um, from centimeters to meters. Okay? So let's say we had something that was, oh, I'm going to start with feet. Let's say it's six feet tall. So that's about my height, six feet. And I want to go out to meters. So we're going to first multiply. Now notice what I did here. I put it over one. I always like to do that because I like to elevate it and get it on. I call this a pedestal. Okay. There's no units here. In a way, it's the number one, but we're not going to use it. So we're just elevating it. This is what we're starting with. I need to go from feet to inches. And then I'm going to go from inches to centimeters. And then we're going to go from centimeters to meters. Now I first evaluate all of the units before I put numbers in. Don't think about, am I getting larger, am I getting smaller? Which way am I going, which number? Don't worry about numbers, okay? First step, start with what's given. Put the units there. Whatever unit is on the top, that goes on the bottom here. And the reason is, now this will cancel against this. Then I can convert from feet to inches. I'll cancel inches against inches, convert inches to centimeters. Centimeters will cancel centimeters. That means my answer will come out in meters when I plug all the numbers in. Let's think about this. How many inches in a foot or how many feet in an inch? Now you got to think. Okay, if you just ended your summer, it might be a little rusty, but hopefully you're not putting 12 down here. You're going to put the 12 up on the top. 12 inches is a foot. 2.54 is that number we said you have to have memorized. That's how many centimeters are in one inch. And then there are 100 centimeters in one meter. <clears throat> so now you can take your calculator and multiply 6 times 12, 72, times 2.54, and I don't know what that is. And then the final thing is you're going to take that number and divide by 100. All right, and then round your answer off, and that's how many meters. So they give you a few examples to study in the book, in the pace, and then uh, you'll get some practice doing some problems like that. The last thing, I'm not going to uh, take time right now to do it. I have another video on the Pace Success. In fact, I think I'll probably link to it on the Pace Success website for chemistry, and that is about significant figures. And the big question is, when are zeros significant and when are they not? That can get confusing. The other confusing rule is if we are doing calculations, like adding or subtracting or multiplying, dividing with measurements, the key is measurements, we have to look at the significant digits in each of those numbers and <clears throat> then there's different rules to follow, okay? I'm not going to review that in this video. I made another video about that that I will link for you to go back and watch and then certainly study the pages here on page 17 and 18. And uh, then they talk about how to tackle problems. They use big words like rules for solving quantitative problems. Quantitative just means there's numbers in it, okay? So it's a story problem with numbers. Makes it sound more challenging though. And uh, measurements. I guess the key word is measurements. Numbers and measurements. So um, good, <clears throat> some good steps to follow there on page 19. Some examples to look at on page 20. And uh, then you're going to apply significant digits to your answers. One last thing I'll mention here, and I'll probably mention it often through this course. I did in physical science as well. When you are scoring, if you have shown your work and you get up to the score key, your answer may not match the score key exactly, and, but it'd be really close. A case like that probably means you did the calculation right on your calculator, but you forgot about significant figures or you <clears throat> didn't apply the right rules about significant digits. And if you look back one step 
in the score key because they usually have a solution guide that shows you how they got the answer. And if you look back one step, you may see your answer that you copied down. And so then you just need to realize, oh, okay, they, they applied significant figures, okay? Um, we, when we do physical science, I tell students don't always be so hard on yourself about significant figures, just really focus on getting the right answer. But uh, certainly for this pace and the next few, we need to really zero in on applying the rules for significant figures and figure out why they rounded the answer the way they did and then follow those rules. All right, I'm gonna stop there. And in fact, I don't think I need to do a video for the history of chemistry. Um, that's a section where there's a lot of names and I think you just really need to take notes and then uh, maybe look ahead at the checkup and the self-test to see what kinds of questions they're asking, make little note cards, and uh, study. <clears throat> Just a lot of stuff to memorize. There's nothing to really understand in that last section. It's more knowledge to memorize, okay? Yay! First pace is almost done. You just started and you're almost done. <clears throat> Go as fast as you can through this one because some of the other pieces we're going to slow down and it'll take a lot more effort, but we're going to get you through it, all right?